Welcome, Greater Heartland Region, KW family, to Ignite Session 10, where we're talking about keeping every lead. My name is Clark Kendall. I serve as your regional technology trainer. Overjoyed to be joined today with Kyle Neiman, somebody I get to hang out with a lot. Kyle, welcome. Hey, glad to be here today, Clark. Yeah, man. We're, we're, we're honored to have you. And so I kind of get to hang out quite a bit. Of course, uh, we, we get to lead together, lead alongside one another, our market center tech trainers in the region. But yeah, introduce yourself. Who, who are you, Kyle? So my name is Kyle Neiman. Uh, a little bit about me. I've been a licensed realtor for 10 years now. So at the end of June, it'll be 10 years. So I've sold, I've uh, done a little bit of coaching. I've done a little bit of everything in the Keller Williams ec ecosystem. But uh, about three years ago, I became the market center tech trainer of the Keller Williams Overland Park office. And, and since then, I've added the Plaza office, the Northland office, the Lee Summit office, and I help with Topeka as well. So I work with about 1,600 agents around, around the greater heartland here with all their technology needs. So, um, so it's kind of fun. It keeps, keeps me busy. Yeah, so you pretty much like control the KC Tech real estate grid. Would that be like a, a fair assessment? About, about half of it, yeah. <laughs> yeah. There's eight offices here in Kansas City. I've got, I got. I, I work with four of them. That's awesome, man. That's so great. Great. Well, man, uh, yeah, really excited to join in on this this topic today. But let let's get going. Sound good? Yeah. So today we're we're starting with the uh, the third segment third segment of Ignite that you guys can see here. The lead follow up. And actually lead follow-up is one of my favorite ones because this is where we really get our business going. So we've covered becoming the real estate expert of choice by building our value proposition. We've also covered generating leads through prospecting and marketing. And today our focus now switches to that lead follow-up where you can make, and make or break your business. So generating a lead takes almost no time at all. We can do lots of different things for that. The important aspect is keeping that lead in your grasp until they're ready to do business with you. And it's not instantaneous all the time. It could take up to 10 years. So in this segment of Ignite, we're going to help you turn that possible business into a probable business and then probable business into a profitable business. So as you guys know, each day we're going to engage in our, our daily success system. And we'll get to that, get to that at the end of the session here. Um, so the lead follow-up process is essential to converting leads to business from the moment you have captured a lead and put it in your database. You guys all know uh, we have command database. So if you're not familiar with that, get with your market center tech trainer, Clark or I, we can definitely help you with that. Um, so today we're going to go over our agenda. And by the end of today, you're going to be able to uh, describe the benefits of establishing a system of lead follow-up, mm -hmm. apply the 19 to the connect touch campaign with leads, explain the importance of cementing the relationship with the leads. So to start thinking about what you will learn today, let's consider what questions you might have and what, and what about lead follow-up you'd like to know more about. So you can also look back and think back to what you learned previous sessions, especially the last segment of Ignite Lead Generation. So at this point, you might be watching in your market center with some other people, or you might be walk, watching alone. But we're gonna take about three minutes to think about these questions. So we'll see you back here in three minutes.
Welcome back, everybody. So now we're going to turn to the lead follow-up page in our participant guide. So how do we define a lead? Mm -hmm. Lead is a person who has shown interest in the service you provide, and you have their contact information, although they have yet to engage in a two-way conversation. So what's a two-way conversation? It could be a direct text where you guys have a conversation back and forth. It could be face-to-face. -face. It could be a telephone call. Somehow it could be email where you have a response back and forth. And the goal of lead follow-up is, is, that, that, is to get that lead to enter into a two-way conversation. So does, does lead follow-up apply to only a lead? No, we, every person in your database, whether a lead or a contact requires follow-ups so that when they have a real estate need, they immediately think of you. Yeah. Are the people you put in your database only in your real estate database? Are you the only real estate agent they know? Probably not likely. They're probably in other people's databases. So how many other real estate databases do you think they're in? And how do you ensure that when they think of real estate, they immediately think of you? Hmm. Yeah, Kyle, I was going to add all that. Like that. That's a really good question. I mean, going back to that, does this lead follow-up only apply to, to a lead? Like, I, yeah, um, that's really good insight, right? It's not just follow-up plans. And I think this is what I think excites well, while we were preparing for this, this is what excites you about this session is um, it's not just any lead that we meet for an open house. This is, is everybody. Yep. And I, and I don't always call it lead follow-up. I call it relationship building. Mm -hmm. You're trying to build a relationship with the people in your database on a consistent basis that when they think real estate, they think of you, yeah. nobody else. Yep. And so we're going to talk a little bit more about that later on, but sometimes I interchange the term lead generation and relationship building and, and lead follow-up in relationship building because relationship building is warm and fuzzy, right? We want to build relationships. And, and so sometimes it's just that change in mindset that I'm building relationships so that I can help those people later on. Yeah. So let's review this graphic and what it means when it comes to lead follow-up. Everyone in your database lives somewhere on this line of, of waves. At the top of the wave is when they purchase a house. Mm -hmm. The day after they buy the house, they move down the wave and continue until they begin to think about a new house. Over, some over someone's lifetime, they have the potential to buy one, two, three, maybe more houses. The distance between those purchases on average is between seven to 10 years. So if I ask, if, so if I gave you a lead close to the top of the wave, what would you perceive about the quality of that lead? That'd be a money lead there, Kyle. I love that. You're like, I'm on that one. <laughs> yeah. But most likely you perceive that, you know, like we said, it'd be a high quality lead uh -huh. and they're close to closing and ready to purchase again. Uh -huh. What if I gave you one right after they, they moved? So just on the right side of that dot at the top, how are you going to perceive that lead? Yeah, not, not, maybe not so exciting. <laughs> Would you say it's a bad lead? I might've said that a time or two in my life in, in a career as a real estate agent. Yes. Clark, is there really anything that's at such a such as a bad lead? No, no, no. I've learned no, it's not. That's not true now. Yes. So there are no bad leads. It's just where the lead is on this potential uh, on this graph. And so, as a real estate agent, following up with all leads with frequency and intensity is the key to remaining in close emotional proximity. So as many leads as they approach the top of the wave and, and are ready to purchase, they think of you. So that's why it's important. Um, and the value of lead follow-up because we don't know where they're get, going to be on this wave and when they're going to hit that top. But if they don't know us and have a relationship with us, they're not going to call us when they get to the top of that wave. Yeah. God, that's a good point, right? Because, I mean, you said seven to ten years. Like seven to ten years. Yeah. That's the average. Yeah. That, that, yeah. Well, what if it's three years? And I'm just ah, they just bought. And I'll wait till seven years to cut touch yep. base. Yeah. I was just talking with an agent today and they said they're seeing several more people that are selling quicker right now. Mm -hmm. um, they, they're, they're taking advantage of that price appreciation and, and getting some, buying something different and they're selling in two to three years rather than the, the traditional seven to 10 because of the way the market's been behaving. There you go. Yeah. Make no assumptions. So, um, so when you think of leads as possible business, it kind of changes the, the dynamic behind that, right? Lead follow-up helps turn the leads from possible business into that probable business with the end being a profitable business. We're all in, in business to, to make a profit, correct? 
Mm-hmm. And so the National Association of Realtors Profile of Home Buyers and Sellers details the opportunity that lead follow-up can provide to your business. They collected research that shows that when selecting an agent to use, 73% of buyers only talked to one agent and 82% of sellers only contacted one agent as well. Mm-hmm. So what that means is if you get an appointment with, with a potential buyer, on average, three out of four of them, you're the only person they're talking to and you can get that business super easy. Almost over 80%, eight out of 10 times that you meet with a, a seller, you're the only one that they're compete, that they're, they're talking to. So since this data shows that most buyers and sellers only talk to one agent before deciding to do business with them, what are you going to do to ensure that you are that one agent for everyone in your database? Mm-hmm. Yeah. So I, like- I really like this quote here. Um, if you're not the first or second in their mind, you probably won't get the business. So this concept of taking up space in people's minds through staying in close emotional proximity to them is called mindshare. Emotional proximity is a result of engaging in the touches with your database. So uh, back when I was in college, I, I got a journalism degree and I got lucky enough to do an internship at the St. Pete Times. And I, I worked in their advertising department. One of our, one of our advertising um, things that we sold was called Toma, Top of Mind Awareness. And it was just a small business card size ad and, and we didn't guarantee where it was going to run, if it was going to run in the sports section, the news section. We just said every day your, your, your business card ad is going to run somewhere in the newspaper. And the idea were, there was just getting that, that ad out there and, and allowing people to see things over and over again. Mm-hmm. Clark, how many times, I, I think that you, know, you might know the exact number, but how many times do you have to see something before you actually remember it? or hear it before you actually remember it. <laughs> well, mine might be a lot higher than other people's. <laughs> right? right? Mine's pretty high. But the, the stats say it's it's seven to 10 times you have to see something before you're going to, you're going to even remember seeing that you, that you remember that you saw it. And so that's what we're doing here is just keeping that, that lead generation, that top of mind awareness for that ad was just that recognition that it might only be the logo and the telephone number. Mm-hmm. You know, that, that's the goal here is, is to, to get that space in their mind that when they think real estate, they think you. And so thinking back to the day that you learned about lead generation, what touches are the strongest when it comes to relationship building? And what are the weakest? And when I talk about touches, it's it's how are we reaching out to people? So think about that for just a second here and think what is most, what is the most powerful way for me to, 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 to interact with someone? So what I think is that meeting in person and a phone call are the touches that have the greatest impact on the relationship you're building. So they are the, the biggest ones, the easiest ones, the ones that people remember the most. Email and text are a little bit weaker when forming those connections and bonds because there's not that, that tone, that, that connection. And um, so you're gonna follow up with a variety of touches and it's important to keep in mind which ones will be most effective as you follow up. So we're going to take a second here and we're going to share our ahas because they have powerful insights to to um, that come from reflection and experience of what we're having. So take a second and um, take a minute here and think about your ahas and and write them down, share them with other people if you're in the room with other people. And we'll be back here in just a minute.
Hey everybody, welcome back. I hope you had some great ahas on that first section here. So the next section is how to, how to lead follow-up. So just like your intention to be strategic with your lead generation efforts, you should be strategic with your lead follow-up efforts. Being thoughtful about how you'll follow up and leveraging the highest value touches that yield the greatest results will help you convert leads at a higher level. So turn to the fortune is in the follow-up mindshare page in your participant guide. Mindshare is gained through positioning yourself in front of leads frequently with relevant and timely information. That's important there, relevant and timely information. The goal is to open the door to two-way communication in addition to getting them to think about you and any, any time they think about real estate. So through Ignite, you've been introduced to two different systems that, that engage your leads and contacts and help you gain mindshare. The two are the 19 to connect and the 36 to convert. So here we've got the, the recommended systems for those. So on the 19 to connect, we've got the, the four touches, uh, the quarterly call plan. Uh, we can do that through command. We can set that up to automatically remind you. We've got the 12 touches um, that are, are some sort of email. We've got the two touches that are promotional, some sort of promotional thing. Maybe it's a, a you know, I'm, I'm a Kansas City person, so maybe it's a Royal schedule. Um, it could be a, a, an Iowa Hawkeyes schedule. It could be a Nebraska Cornhusker schedule, a Arkansas Razorback schedule. Definitely don't do Cardinals schedules, right, Clark? <laughs> no, I'm never. Cardinals fans. I had to get a little, little you know. Little I won't tell you who I'm a fan of. It's embarrassing right now, especially in this season, so I'll be quiet. The Royals have the worst record in baseball, so we can't Okay, I'm a Reds that. fan then. If I, we're not the worst. I'm a Reds fan. Uh, <laughs> Yeah, the Royals are really bad this year. So um, whatever it is, whatever whatever you think your clients will like, um, I've seen seen pop buys. So you could do pop buys as your as your two touches. You know, there, there's all sorts of things for for that type of touch. And then um, maybe we have an event, a, a get together, or several. I I actually think small events are maybe a little bit better where you invite twenty to thirty people instead of two hundred because hmm. you can do that. But maybe you have three or four and you invite a smaller group of people to each of those. Or you go and watch. Uh, you 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 have a couple, you know, four tickets to a to an event, and you you invite two people to go with you to to a play or or a musical or a sporting event or something that that would do, would would constitute that that uh, that extra touch there. So, um, and then we talk about the one cement one to cement and the thirty six to convert. So, um, so right now we're going to give you a chance um, to to think about these. And we've got them right there. So the intent of these touches is to be spread out over a calendar year, which equates to about one touch every three weeks. The goal of this communication is to establish a formal relationship and open that two-way communication. So keep in mind that this is just a list and not a prescri prescription of the order you should complete them. Mm -hmm. For example, the four phone calls don't all need to be in January. We can spread those out um, and, and make sure that they have the biggest impact. Maybe two of the, one of those is on their birthday that you call them, actually make a phone call and not just post on Facebook, happy birthday, on their birthday to, to connect that. Uh, so just a question here, when do you think lead think a lead should be added to your 19 to connect campaign? Yeah, Kyle, I think we get that that question a lot, right? And, and the fact that we just have a 19 touch in place at all, I, I think we're winning over the majority of agents that are looking to connect. True. With leads, right? Yep. Yeah. And, and just having it started is the hardest part, right? Because once you have the system in place, it's open up command and, and you could put all these in and as smart plans and, and the, use the smart plans and you open up command and it's going to tell you exactly who you call today. Mm -hmm. So you don't have to even think about who you need to call. It's just like, oh, here's my system. Oh, today on my calendar, I'm going to send, all, create all the birthday cards for it's June 1st, right? So right. for the rest of June, on June 1st, I'm going to create all the birthday cards that I want to send out, have them in a file that I can just drop them in the mail a day or two before their birthday. So yeah. creating the system makes it a lot easier to to actually do the activities than trying to think of what you need to do each day. Yeah. yeah. And Kyle, another thought here, right? Like that's a system around, if you don't have any follow-up with the leads, like work the, the 19 to connect. And you also think about your, your lead source. I keep it simple and run the 19 touch. However, let's say... Uh, like you're at an open house and, uh, you know, 30 people come through and you got 30 little small surveys filled out and two of them say, Hey, yeah, we're ready to purchase right now, but you didn't get, didn't get to connect with them. 
Right. Now, a night to, to connect would be awesome to put in place. And yet you might need to be based on your lead source when somebody comes into your world and their readiness. Right. This this is a more longer term play. Maybe after you had some intensive short term follow up, like if I get that I'm open house. I'm calling them every other day for, for maybe a couple of weeks and then long term 19 connect. So um, exactly. So, so right me, right? We might have an eight touch that is a phone yeah. call. You know, the, the open house was 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 this last Sunday. Our mm -hmm. first connection is Monday that we made a phone call. Today, we're going to send them a text. Hey, just checking in to see if you need anything. On Friday, we're going to we're going to send them an email. Hey, hey, here's some other homes for sale around your area. And so we can do those. And if we don't get in that two way conversation before we get there, before we get to the end of those six to eight touches, then we put them on this 19 touch plan to just continuously follow up with them. Yeah, yeah, I love that. Love that. Be aware that when communicating with leads, it's speed to lead. When you get a lead, they want to hear from you. Even if they don't respond, they might be clicking on three Facebook ads for three different people. They may have gone to four open houses. The quicker you can get to them and and some kind of give them that that quick information, that quick value proposition, the more likely you're going to get that lead. So, um, so your speed to lead should be rapid. Just think that if the lead entered your database through social media post and consider how quickly that person has already moved on to engaging and interacting with other social media. How quick do you respond to somebody, put a quote in or just even like it, and then you're on to the next one and you don't even remember that you actually actually typed or, or wrote that thing, right, Clark? <laughs> yes, <laughs> quite a bit. So what if the next account they interact with was also a real estate agent? So they saw this house, they liked your, your post on the house or your ad, then they liked the next one. So that's why you need to engage that quickly is, is we never know who they're talking to next. So moving on to the next one, uh, considerations for your lead follow-up here. So as you get started in your real estate career and you begin to generate leads during Ignite, there's some considerations you should make regarding your own lead follow-up plan. So you're going to be uh, doing your lead, using your lead follow-up best practices page in the participant guide for some brainstorming. We're going to take about 10 minutes to, to do this. And then we're going to come back to this page. So some things to consider when you're following up with leads are match the touch campaign with your strengths. What are you good at? Are you good at making phone calls? Are you good at um, having events? Are you a great event planner? Are you great at uh, creating emails that, that engage? F find those strengths. And then be prepared to reach out with the reason you're calling or contacting the lead. For example, sending market information as the touch prior to a phone call. So you could send the market information today on Friday, follow up with a phone call saying, hey, just wanted to check and see if you got that information or you got those homes that I, I sent you on, on Wednesday for um, that you might consider. So make sure each time you call that you communicate with the lead that they know you're in real estate. Don't be that secret agent. Uh, secret agents don't get business because no one knows they're in real estate. So make sure that you have your business name in there, that you're sending it from your your real estate email address that, that somehow you make sure that when you talk to them you have some something that says you're in real estate mm. so um when you're going to complete your daily follow-up tasks make sure that's time blocked as a separate time from your lead generation time so when you're lead generating you lead generate and then you create a list a to-do list even using uh, command tasks to do this right we could put a task on a, on a lead and say we need to do this for this lead and we schedule time later in the day outside of that lead follow-up time to do those actual tasks. Um, and set your, your personal standard for what you think uh, the, the speed to lead needs to be. Mm -hmm. So if it's a Facebook lead, is it how quick do you get there? If it's, if it's an open house, how much do you do that? So we're going to take about 10 minutes here and allow you to work on this and get some ideas here. So we'll see you back soon.
Hey, welcome back everybody. So hopefully you've, you've taken some time to consider those questions that we had on your, your participant guide of your strengths and a few, few of the other questions there. And now we're actually going to uh, take the time to create your 19 point plan. So you can see on the slide here, a few of the ideas of, of what could actually happen here. So, um, so it's based on the practices of, of top agents. The first two columns are the magic of the plan and nothing should be eliminated. So columns one and two, the, the, the annual occurrences and the actual activity, we're going to keep those. But then the plan is up to you to what, what meets your strengths, what you want to do, and how you want to, to consume those. So when we talk about phone calls, we talk about, um, we talk about connect with every lead quarterly, offer something of value, ask for a referral. Um, so depending on how you want to make that phone call, maybe the phone call is an event invite. Um, so... So each of these is, is its own thing here. Um, the, the examples in the plan are just examples and you can use these as your own or you can create your own. And there may be some costs associated with some of these things. So just make sure that you know when you're doing these that, that there are some costs. So if you're, if you're mailing stuff out, there's gonna be postage on that. If you're having an event, there's gonna be some event costs for that. Uh, if you're, if you're uh, Trying to think of other things that have costs here. So a a uh, neighborhood event, at the 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 neighborhood event that you do, maybe it's uh, dumpsters and donuts where you provide a, a dumpster. There's going to be a cost to, to that. Uh, the promotional calendars, the 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 direct mail stuff. There's the cost to those types of things. Uh, maybe there's a cost if you're doing uh, really really fancy video editing. You might have a cost for some video editing or for some um, microphones. So I just got a new microphone. You guys can see here. Um, there's, there was a cost associated with creating a better sound for when I'm doing videos like this. Mm -hmm. And so um, always consider those. So we're going to take some time here and we're going to uh, write ideas in each category. What you want to do, you can use some of these samples from the slides. You can, you can make up your own. And then we're going to take some time and look at your calendar and say, all right, when do I want to do some of these events? So we're going to take five to 10 minutes here. And um, we're going to lean towards the 10 minute side because I think there's a lot for you to do in this part here and come up with all these different things that you can send out. Uh, if you don't have any, uh, if you don't have any ideas, page 138 of the millionaire real estate agent mm -hmm. has ways that you can, can communicate with your stuff. So there's marketing sides. So different things that you can do in there as well. So take a look at that. If you get stumped, mm -hmm. um, also Google, ways to communicate with my real estate clients. You'll see some, you'll see some ideas there. Google's my great friend, right? So, <laughs> right? so think about this and we'll see you guys in 10 minutes.
welcome back everybody i hope you've enjoyed that time to uh, start to create your 19 uh, step plan and so we're going to move on to the next part here and when you've generated a lead and captured their information you can talk to them if you haven't heard back you don't know much about that person and your commu communication is going to be a little bit broader focusing on a range of values hmm. this is where you're going to communicate your value with your own value proposition if you don't know what that is go back to week four or day four of ignite and you'll you'll get that hmm. so you can even use the company or personal statistics so when i started out in real estate i used my office's statistics hey my office is the the number one office my office sold this much my team and your team can be your market center tech trainer your broker your team leader your mca clark me we're all on your team and mm -hmm. so you don't have to have a team to say my team you can actually put us in your in your thing my team of seven did this much real estate or mm -hmm. or i've got my team supporting me so don't worry about not having a team because you do have a team mm -hmm. we're all we're, we're all on your team for you so um but make sure to, to use those big numbers and 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 find them out if you don't know them your mca should know your numbers for your office and you how you guys rank in uh in the your entire mls area so um so so one of the things to think about is people are more likely to respond to the message when you're that you're communicating when it feels personal and relative to them so one of the things we talk about in command is creating these subsets using the tags and those tags allow you to create some very very targeted marketing i always use like uh cooking and sports for example so you have uh you have a, a sports tag for for people that like sports mm -hmm. you have a cooking tag for people that like cooking you might go and find a chef or do your own video of, of your favorite recipes um or find a chef that gives tips you send that out to the cooking people and the sports people the sports people don't care <laughs> but what if in august you did a cooking segment on how to take food to tailgates and other events, mm -hmm. how to keep food safe, warm, cold, whatever it is, you target that same video to two different groups then in your database. And it's going to be relevant to both of them because the sports people are going to like it for tailgating. Mm -hmm. The kitchen, the, 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 the cooks in the group are going to like it because they like to cook and like to take it other places. I know like our office has a foodies every once in a while. Like we have lunch after our team meeting. We, we have, food and and those people like to bring stuff one of our agents she bakes all the time and she puts stuff in the kitchen for us to eat because she doesn't want to eat it all herself and <laughs> i'm every time she posts i'm like running out my door she'd be my great target for that type of, of video and so we, we have to think about what value we're communicating and how we can make it relevant to that particular person mm. there's there's some one-size-fits-all marketing but there's also some of that very targeted marketing to give them that very specific I understand you, I know what you like type of marketing. Mm -hmm. So, so as you engage your leads, you can uncover how to serve them better and learn what they're interested in and use those tags. As you learn this, you, you start to segment your leads into those specific groups, day six of Ignite, and we communicate with those very value-based information. So look beyond the who, the just the who when you contact a lead to the most basic way to start doing this is to craft your message based on the source the lead was generated from. So if you have Facebook leads, you might have a different first message than if you have an open house lead, right, Clark? That's we're right. Gonna, we're going to work with those people just a little bit differently than we would, you know, Facebook leads are different than open house. Mm -hmm. You can start different parts of this funnel. The Facebook leads might be towards the top of the funnel. They're just starting their, their search. Yeah. But the open house leads are very much down towards the, hey, we're pretty serious because we're actually out looking at houses in person. So you want to tailor that connection to that type of person. And so you might have a couple of different 19, 19 to connect plans or that, that first eight connect plan based on where that lead comes from. And I meet somebody I, I worked with a lot of investors when I was, uh, when I did a lot more selling. And so my investor contacts would be different than my retail contacts because the investors are looking for something different. They want different stuff. So I would learn stuff on, different websites like bigger pockets and I'd share that with with my with my clients through or my potential clients through different things to show that value to them my my retail investors my people that are looking for a house to live in they're not going to care about that and so we might have a couple of different plans based on what we can provide to them hmm. so, 
Um, so we really want to do that to open that way to two-way conversation that, that they want more information from us. They want to call us and, and find out what else we know. And once we get that two-way conversation, we get to figure out their motivation for engaging us uh, to help them buy, sell, or invest in real estate. And we get to know their timeline. Are they are they the the just bought and they're at the top of the curve headed down, or are they on their way up that they're on their way to purchasing a house? And yeah. one of the things we have to remember about that curve is it's not just the personal house. They might be wanting to invest in real estate, or they might have um, have a family member that they're going to take care of and need to buy a second house. Mm -hmm. So we can't just look at their timeline of when they just bought because they might be purchasing for other reasons. And that's what we want to get to is, is that motiva motivation to why they should work with us. And so, um, and then we, we use that information to group them. So we're not creating, if we have a hundred leads, we're not creating a hundred different messages, we're creating two or three messages, but they're, they, they work out well for everybody else. Yeah. Kyle, Kyle's going to add here. But I, I remember learning leads for like the first time and, or not leads, but tags, right? And I always understood, always heard, well, tag your database, segment, like categorize them. And yet it really didn't hit home until I understood like, yeah, that, that is how I can make purposeful value ads, market to them in a way that they make sense. And so once I made that connection, that's that made all the more importance like, okay, now that I know that, how should I tag my database? So um, yeah, that's just too good not to not to connect, make those connections, it really anchors it in. Yep. And, and when you provide them something of value, they're going to take your phone call. They're going to open your emails. Mm -hmm. they're, they're not just going to go, oh, it's Kyle again. He's trying to sell me a house. <laughs> they go, oh, what does Kyle have to share with me today? Yeah. How, yeah. What can I learn today? Or, or, or what, what value is he going to bring? Not just, just, can I help you? Can <laughs> I help you? Yeah. So, um, so we're moving on. We're going to uh, turn to the communicate with value page in your participant guide. And we look at, at some different uh, things and some different questions here. So why are you thinking about buying and selling? Tell me more. We want to get those open-ended questions because we want them to start talking. Hmm. Um, so once you know the source of the lead, you can narrow your range of value. Are they investors? Are they, are they retail? Are they first-time home buyers? Your first-time home buyer is going to be different than somebody that's bought two or three houses. Um, so knowing the source of that lead helps you uh, pair that value with your communication. So a uh, lead generated through a client referral is going to be communicated differently than a lead that came through a sign call or a Facebook ad or in, or different resources. Because your client, one of your friends, family, somebody introduced you to that person. That's a different type of lead than a Facebook lead. Mm -hmm. so, um, so we're going to start uh, doing an activity and brainstorming some statements and questions that you can use to communicate with different lead sources in the database. So these questions uh, can be incorporated into the 19 to connect touch campaigns. So maybe there's something that comes from these questions that you go back a couple, go back to that 19 step page, go, oh, if I ask this question, or maybe I should answer this question with something of value because I get asked that question a lot. So consider the lead sources you already have in your database when you're, when you're starting to do these questions because that's the first place to start, right? Um, if you don't have very many, start with referrals, open houses, and social media. Those are some great ways to, to get leads. Um, we, we have ways to run Facebook ads inexpensively through command. Um, open houses, so talk with your broker. C can you do open houses for other agents in your office? And you don't have to have the listing. Most of the time, the broker's, broker and agent's permission, you go to the agent that has the listing, you're gonna be able to do those, those open houses. And I know there's a whole section in that. So. So, uh, so next, we're going to tap our lead sources and uh, write those statements communicating which segment is for what. For example, for your call, can you write statements that help uncover their motivation? Like, what are you thinking about buying or selling? Tell me more. Those questions at the top. Um, so, so go ahead and take about five minutes to work on these questions, and we'll be back with you here shortly.
Hey everybody, welcome back. I hope you got some great questions. So now we're gonna turn to our post lead follow up page in your participant guide. And um, and once we obtain that, that permission to have that two way conversation, the lead becomes a contact in your database. So in command, you're gonna do this manually. You're just gonna unclick the lead button and it's now a contact. It also means that you need to move the lead from your 19 to connect campaign to the, to the 36 to convert. You've achieved the purpose of the 19 to connect. You know, we, we talked about maybe having that eight step plan. If they start to a conversation on that eight step plan, we never get to the 19 to convert. We just mm -hmm. jump straight to the 36 to, to, uh, to convert. Mm -hmm. And so, um, once you create that two way conversation, we quickly switch what we what we're communicating. Mm -hmm. And so connecting with the lead doesn't necessarily mean that they're going to do business with you or that the, your relationship is as strong as it could be. That's why you need to continue with another touch campaign. I know, you know, personally, I've had people that I thought were good friends work with other realtors because I've assumed that they were just going to work with me. I didn't continue to cement that relationship. Mm -hmm. It happens all the time. The agents are like, oh, my gosh, my neighbor went with somebody else. Well, what did you do to continue to build that relationship? Mm -hmm. um, because if you don't, they're not going to work with you. Remember, we talked at the very beginning of this of that that awareness that that you have to be one or two in their mind share. And that's where once you start that two-way conversation, that's where this 36 uh, to convert starts to come in. Yeah. Is you're Kyle, just reminding them all the time. Yeah, Kyle's going to add there, like it, it is a simple task to unmark them as a lead, but I, I would encourage folks like, celebrate that like either your quick eight touch plan to start or your 19 connect worked like do a little dance like get excited like that that's a big deal to unmark them as a lead they finally connected with you because the plan worked so don't yep. don't don't gloss over that that's a really cool opportunity you know a lot of a lot of uh there's a lot of numbers out there on on how many leads actually turn into business and you know it's like one percent of facebook leads and it's mm -hmm. it's 10 10 to one on your database you know there's all these numbers of how many people actually convert. And so when you actually get that two-way conversation, it's a celebration sure. because so few, you know, all, depending on where your leads are coming from, so few of them actually do that two-way conversation that this is awesome. You, you, you're working towards building that that profitable business. Huge win. Um, and so don't get discouraged by those numbers because they, they, they're just numbers. Yep. There's, you know, you create the emotion around them. They're just numbers. You just know that, Hey, we're going to get this much. You know, mm -hmm. um, and when you beat that number, you're like, yes, I'm better than I'm better than the average Facebook lead generator. <laughs> so, so whether a lead is a contact in your database, uh, or a lead, or a contact, they should be in your touch campaign. And this is how you gain that mind share. Continue to do the job job of the real estate agent. So at this point, when the lead opens the door for the two way conversation, we've got to cement that relationship. So this is the high value touch that solidifies that relationship. You know, everyone in your database should be cemented right when you transition them to the 36 to convert. Mm -hmm. So uh, we're going to refer to our post lead follow up page in the participant guide again and write down what do you think is the purpose of the one to cement touch campaign? Give you like five seconds to think about that right here. Mm -hmm. So the cement, the cement touch is a high value touch that offers a strong first impression and sets the tone for your relationship together. Whatever you choose here should be should serve more than one purpose. This touch should tell them about the service you provide, help set up a conversation for later, serve as a reminder of the interaction, tell them how to refer a business to you. Mm -hmm. And so um, when we tell them about the service you provide, that's a, that's a, hey, if they're a buyer lead and you've had that conversation, that's what you can provide for a buyer or a listing presentation. Hey, I'd love to talk to you more about your what, what, what you're looking for in a home, can I call you tomorrow? That's the, the set up a conversation for later. You know, serve as, a, serve as a reminder of the interaction. Hey, it was great uh, connecting with you on, how are we connected? Email, Facebook, phone call. It's great talking to you on, on Monday. Look forward to our next conversation. So we do mm -hmm. two things there. We, we, we served as a reminder of the interaction. We set up a, a conversation for, for later. And then um, we can remind them that, that that they can refer stuff to us. I know a lot of agents at the bottom of their email. Um, it's it's part of their signature. I'm never too busy for your referrals. Um, or I look forward to helping you and all your friends and family. Just a quick reminder that, that 
they can send people to you as well. Yeah. And so, yeah, Kyle, I was going to add, I was going to add, I mean, this is, this is brand new, right? So, that, I mean, if, if, if you were one of those people that, that believe in, in mastery and you've attended Ignite and you're going to Ignite again, like this one that is brand, brand new. And, and I love that it's here because it bridges the gap and really anchors in that. And to, I, again, I got to give back that celebration. Like when you're unchecking that, celebrate it and also remember cement. So an idea here is what if you offer the Keller Inc. book, your first home as a gift to first time home buyer lead? There's a little bit of a cost in there, but what impression would that give them that you're thinking about them as the first time home buyer? You know, as an as an investor, what if you gave them, you know, it's a, it's a brand new investor client. You did something mm -hmm. for uh, to get investor leads. What if yeah. you uh, gave them, you know, a, a, a description to bigger pockets or or we've got, you know, it's a brand new investor. You know, we've got the 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 uh, millionaire real estate investor. Mm -hmm. what if you gave them the millionaire real estate investor or the or the flip or a hold if they're going to flip houses. There's a there's a Keller Inc. book called Flip. There's a Keller Inc. Mm -hmm. called, book called uh, Hold um, mm -hmm. to help them grow their business and provide them something of value. There's a little bit of cost to that. But I said, what what would that do if 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 you're the only one doing that? They reached out to seven agents and you're the only one that gave them something that would help them grow their business, help them understand the first time home buyer process. Mm -hmm. yeah. so, um, and, and Kyle's going to add here, right? I mean, there might be your go-to, like I'm thinking of another thing, like if we could step in the, in the techie world, maybe something that's free, if I have an open house guest, right? And I'm reaching back out to them. They finally connect. And of course I can tell them about the service to provide, you know, I have a, a seven step plan to win in any market, to help my buyers find that home in any market. You can yep. create that in your buyer guide and command, but also it could be you create a safe search for them for any open houses and then send that to them through your app, right? Or, or the website. It's either way you can go for that. So um, it doesn't all necessarily have to be, you know, money-based. What, what exactly. would they look for? I, I think our, our websites are one of our most underutilized uh, forms of helping cement this is, is mm -hmm. once we know their kind of their ideas is, is our websites can do searches where where we can say, hey, in St. Charles, Missouri, or in in Overland Park, Kansas, or Lincoln, Nebraska, here's all the open houses that are coming up in that city. And there's a specific link for that that you could then send them and it updates every every day. So yeah. when new open houses get added to your MLS, they automatically show up on that that link yeah. and, and allows them to kind of customize their open house thing. You could set up the same type of search with with homes that they want or um, price to, price reductions. Hey, here's all the homes that that um, that had a price reduction. Are you looking for a deal? Here's the price reductions. You know that that they've been beaten out for. The, you know they made offers with other agents and now they're wanting to work with you and they've been beaten out. Hey, here's some houses for sale that had to reduce their price because they were overpriced. Let's look at those. Let's relook at those because maybe now they fell into your price range. Yeah. Well, yeah. Kyle, I love what you added there, right? Because not only did you provide that high value touch, but you said, okay, well, maybe they, they have been beat up by other homes, right? Or, yep. um, so answering that question, here's what you're giving them, but what's in it for them, right? Like how yeah. do they either make their world better or alleviate a pain point or get them where they want to go? So I shared in the open house, the open house session prior with Chris linguist, right? So part of mine, whether it was in person or later, okay, here's my list of open houses, you know, the most recent list. So you make sure that you don't go to one that's canceled and waste your time. All right. So while you're providing this high touch, this one to cement, right? Clearly communicate and engage away, not just like, Hey, here's a list of open houses. Okay. What does that do for them? And communicate that in that cement to touch there. Yep. I always uh, think of the radio station WIFM. <laughs> yeah. What's in it for me? That's what your your leads are wanting is, is when you send them something, why does it matter to them? Mm -hmm. Yep. I just heard Zig Ziglar in my head there. WIFM. <laughs> just hear his voice. <laughs> Zig's great. Oh, man, he is. Yep. So, so now we're at the end of the session. So we're going to uh, we're going to wrap up with a few aha. So um, so take some time and think about these questions. So what is lead follow-up? How do I lead follow-up? 
And what is post lead follow up? And um, you're going to break out into your into your groups if you're meeting your market center. Uh, but the Make sure to finish out your action plans from today. Uh, finish out that lead follow up to 19 Connect plan uh, for any new leads in your database so that you have something ready to go. Uh, make sure to schedule your calendar for those activities going forward that every day from one to two or whatever time you choose, I'm going to do my lead follow up activities. Like we mentioned, it's separate from that lead generation time. If you, if you call your sphere from nine to 11, maybe it's 11 to 12 that you do your lead follow up. Um, and then prepare your one cement item of value that best represents you and have it ready to cleanse those relationships to show your interest in how your service provides that. So, so think about this. How's your mindset now? And take a couple of minutes here for your ahas, and then we're going to break out into a, under our groups. So thank you guys for joining me. I hope you found this valuable. And, and Clark, always good to, to have, a, have a class with you. And always, Kyle. Good luck with your lead follow-up, everybody. Yeah, Kyle, thank you so much. Yeah, man. And I, I'll just say, yeah, thanks for bringing your expertise in this. And of course, training a multitude of agents there in KC. Uh, I know they're, they're stronger for it. Absolutely. And, um, you know, this was actually a lot of new content, right? And so I think these are great tools that even outside of Ignite, I think a lot of folks can use them. So whoever's not here with you today, whether you're watching this, or in, whether in your market center by yourself, ask yourself like who, who else needs to hear that? Who else has possibly done a lot of lead gen and not really found found themselves getting to the table to the appointment? They, they, sure found, some... they found all the leads were bad leads, right? <laughs> all right, yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah, good question. Like, where did you hear that last? Like, all oh, these are bad leads. And hopefully that's a trigger for you now when, when you hear that. That's a good point. You know, I, I, I teach a lot. And one of the things I always tell people is, is if, you, if you're going to do an open house or you're going to run Facebook ads or you're going to get these leads and you don't have a solid follow-up plan, any money you're going to spend on that, just give it to me instead. Because you're <laughs> going to get the same result of giving me the money or not following up with these leads. Yeah. Get, so. get some time back too right, in their lives, right? right? Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, Kyle, thanks for uh, presenting this today, man. Really good stuff. And so again, if you're in your market center, absolutely take action on, on the ahas that Kyle wanted, uh, prompted you to do. So spend time wrapping that up. Then assume you'll probably take a break and then your market center will have some daily success activities where you get to role play together, get more familiar with that forward conversation. Maybe Instead of the four conversation, you want to spend some time practicing these these scripts that you wrote down or these questions that you, you answered once a certain source comes in. So spend time in that role play, lead gen together, right? Go find that business, those people to help build those relationships, write those warm and fuzzy notes to those people you connect with. And of course, your, your daily 10, 5, 1 through the social media. So we'll jump into those success activities and we're, we'll wrap up. We're still in the, in the lead follow up segment. Uh, but we'll talk more about follow-up plans. This is an important topic. So session 11, we'll go into more follow-up. We'll see you all then.